more that you go into an authentic spirituality and the more that your trust level climbs, you start to realize that you are responsible for your state of mind, always, every moment, every day, everything, but you aren't responsible for the script, so to speak. It, that we have taken on a responsibility that is not really ours. Um, how does it play out? I mean, some people know that the 12-step programs are very helpful for a lot of people. There's a, a prayer that came along called the Serenity Prayer. And basically, you've got three components in the Serenity Prayer. I always tell people, oh, of course, the Miracles is a big, thick book, 1,200 and some pages and everything, but it's just the Serenity Prayer. Don't, don't get too bent out of shape about all the, how thick it is. <laughs> it's just the Serenity Prayer. That's all it is, is a clarification of the Serenity Prayer. Three components to the Serenity Prayer. What you can change, what you cannot change, are two, and the wisdom to know the difference <laughs> is the third. The Holy Spirit, or the Spirit that's within all of us, is the wisdom to know the difference. What we can change is we can change our mind. We can change our perspective, our outlook on the world. What we can't change is the world itself, and that's probably the the hardest pill to swallow. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. After 10 years of university, after countless workshops, seminars, to improve myself, to give myself a better life, after joining psychology, studying psychology, humanistic psychology, transpersonal psychology, to make the world a better place. Now you're telling me I can't make the world a better place. Oh, <laughs> I just watched Heaven Almighty. You know, the, the movie, and it's like, change, change the world, change the world, and I'm like, oh, no, no, it's, you can't, you can't, you can't even change the world, you can't even make the world a better place. Now that is humbleness, when you actually start to, to, to realize that you can't change the world, then you have all this energy and commitment and devotion, it's like, okay, then what do you want me to do? And it's like, change your perspective. Just one tiny little tweak is where all the burdens are lifted, where all the, where the blind can see and the lame can walk, where the, the dead are born again and resurrected. One little tweak of mind, that's one shift in perspective from the egoic perspective, the personal, the linear perspective, to the, the vertical you know, to alignment with the Source, to the Holy Spirit, or whatever you choose to call it, or whatever, that tweak is, is the one that brings an end to all suffering, you know. And people have said, well, can you give me kind of like a metaphor or something, and everything? I say, well, it's like a little string of spaghetti. You know, you hold the spaghetti, and it looks like a line, and then when you turn it, and turn it, turn it, turn it, if you turn it and you look at it just the right way, it turns into a point. Linear time versus the present moment. Eckhart Tolle, the power of now. You know, I mean, it's how many saints and mystics have been telling us this for how many centuries, you know, live in the present, live in the now, let go of the past and the future. So, so for me, that's, that is the the most practical thing, and then as you give your mind over to that, everything is taken care of. So, in your case, let me give you an example from 2000 years ago. There's this guy walking around with his long hair, and he's like very calm, and he used to be a, a carpenter, uh, but he got to a certain point where he was like, no, that's not it either, and all of a sudden, uh, this, this word started coming out of his mouth, you know, before Abraham was, I am, I and the Father are one, you know, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but through me, and all these kind of things. At the time, you know, his, his biological mother Mary is like, oh, loco, I mean, this, oh my God, I can't believe it, <laughs> he's gone insane, <laughs> he's a good Jewish boy there for a while, but, um, a good provider and everything, but oh my God, this I, I and the Father are one. It was shocking. It was shocking to the whole world. It was shocking to the apostles, and even the apostles. Imagine you're going along, you're, you've got your 
same human conditions, your daily struggles and everything, and you're trying to make a living fishing, and this guy comes along and looks in your eyes and says, follow me. And you go, oh my God, there's something inside of you that says, I gotta say yes. And there's another part of you that's going, oh hell, this is, this is gonna overturn everything. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell my wife. Uh, and yes, Peter was married, and Peter had children. So, you know, you, what you're going through is, is what Peter went through, because he, he said yes, and nothing was the same. You know, his fatherhood, his family, it just, it just touched and changed everything. It wasn't easy. It certainly wasn't easy in that position. In fact, Peter, for three years, was an apostle, and basically, and then after the, cruc the crucifixion and the resurrection, you know, Peter was reunited with his family and, the, and the, the learning continued on in the context of the family. But for three years it was, it was just, it was a, a rough ride for that ego that believed it was Peter. You know, get thee behind me Satan, one time Jesus <laughs> said to Peter when Peter tried to block him from going back to Jerusalem. So, uh, the other thing that people don't know is that, um, that the apostles, even though they lived on donations and everything, that there was one of the apostles that was assigned to all of the apostles that had families. So, that even in the time of Jesus, and even when he called Peter, there was no sense of, of abdicating on responsibilities. You know, that Peter was married, Peter had children, those children still need to eat, and the funds that came in to support Jesus and the apostles but some of those funds were channeled through one of the apostles and they would actually from time to time visit those families. So this is an important thing because a lot of times people feel torn between serving God and family responsibilities. That I always said, you have to give it all over to the Holy Spirit and when you do, everything is handled. You know, there is no abdicating. You can't just say, okay, I'm walking out on responsibilities, on mortgages, on child support payments, on things that are, that are established. Yes, they were, those duties and obligations were set up by the ego, but they can only be undone by the Holy Spirit. 